Welcome to Crossroads on TVI, a show that showcases the Tamil Canadian community, their issues and their successes. I'm your host, Madhusha Sendal. Today we have another insightful two-part show for all of you. There are oftentimes pre-planned careers in mind for a child, courtesy of their parents. These include becoming a doctor, engineer, lawyer, or so forth. Creative art fields aren't generally their first suggestion. However, today we have a group of young Tamil women joining us who are pursuing, whether it be part-time or full-time, careers in the creative industry. Let's meet our guests. Shivi Jaya has an honors degree from New York University. She is also a self-taught baker and cake artist whose influence comes from her grandmother. What started off as a simple hobby has now grown into a booming business via word of mouth and social media. With each unique and new order comes a new challenge, but the feeling she receives from a finished cake only adds fuel to her desire to keep creating. Nila Haran is an international self-taught makeup artist known for her ability to mix timeless elegance with modern day glamour. Nila has completed her undergraduate degree in cognitive science and a postgrad specialization in autism and behavioral science before she entered the world of beauty and makeup artistry. She specializes in South Asian weddings and has been published in numerous local and global publications. Thank you ladies for joining us today. Thank you for having us here. <laughs> Our pleasure. So let's just get right into it, shall we? Was becoming a cake and makeup artist something you had always wanted to do as a child or was it a passion that flourished postgraduate degree? I never saw myself as be to be a makeup artist when I was young. Honestly, I always knew I wanted to be an artist. I never saw that makeup was going to be my outlet. Like even now, I look back and I, I think I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm a makeup artist. I like it just came out of nowhere for me. So it definitely flourished later on in life. Well, I would say my love for baking stemmed from um, from childhood, but I never thought myself as a cake baker in the future as well. And um, it probably has a lot to do with both my grandmothers, who are amazing chefs and uh, they always included me in the kitchen, involved me in little tasks. That's where it probably originated from. And uh, my mom, my mother was an artist. She taught art back home. So she enrolled me in anything that, anything and everything that involves art from pottery to drawing to painting. So that's where I probably mm -hmm. learned that this is cr letting myself out creatively. It's probably... So creativity is in the blood almost, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So you both spoke about how it wasn't something you envisioned for yourself as a child. So what point in your life did you say, hey, this is what I actually really like to do. I want to be a makeup artist or I want to bake cakes and create masterpieces. Well, on my end, it actually happened sort of out of nowhere about a year ago. I was actually forced by a friend to make a cake. And believe me, I, I tried to say no. I really didn't think I had enough confidence to create something for somebody else. And just posting that one picture on social media and on my Instagram page ended up leading to so many other people contacting me through word of mouth and email. So someone had to push you and kind of show you that really this is something me. you're actually good at. Mm -hmm. How about you? For me, um, I actually, just by chance, when I was 16, one of the first jobs that I took, I was a face painter at Wonderland. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when I really, like you were young, I don't realize, like I didn't think of it as makeup art at the Your time. Your first canvas. Yeah, it was my first canvas. And I've always been into painting, which is why I, I decided to go into this job. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. And I think when I left, I'm like, oh, I love doing this. And then that's when I started collecting makeup. And just like every, every time someone came over, I'm like, let me do your makeup. Let me do your makeup. <laughs> and that's how it started for me. And I think the, the final push for me was after I um, moved in with my husband, now fiance at the time. Um, he was a photographer. So I think we just worked really well together. We did a lot of shoots together. And it sort of picked up from there. And that's where. So you were both kind of exposed in the creative industry. Mm -hmm. You had your mother, your grandmother, and then you had your fiance, now husband. Mm -hmm. So that's fair enough. So, but why pursue an academic route? Were you passionate about uh, behavioral science, sociology, or is this something that your parents pushed you into? I, um, my parents never pushed me into anything. I was actually really passionate into what I was going into. I definitely wanted to do disability studies and um, even after, while I was doing makeup, I was still in school and I was really, I was actually considering doing it full time, um, working in disability studies, but makeup actually just picked up and I just got so many orders and I'm like, hey, let's see where this is going to take me. And that's when I decided I'm going to do makeup. But I think I still really love what I went to school for and I'm glad I did it. I don't regret it at all. 
I'm probably on the exact same boat as yeah. you. My parents are very supportive of what I do. And um, I also do think I partly did go to school because of their influence as well. I know that's what my parents wanted me to do, mm -hmm. to finish my degree. And I don't regret it at all either. I learned so much. And as they say, knowledge is power. Yeah. So. So you did mention that your parents are supportive. Yeah. Um, how about yours, Nilla? Were they supportive when you made that switch into makeup artistry, especially after you did your degree? I don't think they were really keen on me going and doing it full time. Um, they were like, oh, you know, you can still work and do it. I'm like, no, I think I really want to do this. And s But uh, uh, in terms of doing it, they were okay with it, but they were kind of scared of you know, not having that nine to five job, mm -hmm. that security. I think with a lot of parents, it's just having that security of benefits. Their or fear, like right? And a exactly. child, they want to make sure that exactly. their child is set on the right foot. Exactly. For sure. So is this something you see yourself doing in the long run? For me, I definitely see myself doing this for a very, very long time. Even I think just a couple of days I had a conversation with my husband. I'm like, do you think I'll ever like go back to work in my field? And I'm like, I don't, I don't think I will. I think I really, as it is now, I can see myself doing this for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, same with me. I'm, I just started off, it's been about a year, and it's going so well that I really do want to um, pr progress more into it and mm -hmm. probably go back to school for something that has to do with cakes or baking. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so both of you are fairly established in your respectable careers. Um, how did you get to where you are today? Would you like to share some of your stories, late nights, early mornings? What brought you to the place you're here? Well, <laughs> late nights, early mornings for sure. There are nights I haven't even gone to sleep because sometimes I do end up taking more than I can s swallow, like to put too much on my plate because I don't like saying no to my clients and I love taking as many orders as I could, but it does get really hard with just one person and sometimes cakes take forever to make. But yeah, a lot of um, hard work and dedication, I would say. I would say the same thing and I think a lot has to do with just believing in yourself especially in the community that we are in a lot of people I, I don't they don't respect I guess artistic fields so it's just telling yourself constantly that this is worth it this is worth it mm -hmm. this is worth my time this is worth the late night you know it's okay if I only get two hours of sleep or zero sleep I'm gonna get there I'm gonna get there and like it, it's definitely a lot of hard work and just being passionate I think passion has a lot to do with it I think in the artistic field if you're not passionate about what you're doing you're not going to do it like that's true exactly that's so true so you have to remind yourself sometimes it does do you ever see yourself getting to a point where you ask yourself why am i doing this all the time honestly i think yeah. for the first few times like when you do early mornings or when i'm sleep deprived i'm like maybe i should have just like you know stuck to like like a monday just friday job or, or when your friends are out like saturdays partying and i'm like i'm working or like there's family events and a lot of times i think that's what's the hardest when there's so many like everyone's just getting together and we're never there I'm pretty sure especially it's like weekends exactly <laughs> and um, it's it's not like a nine-to-five where you can call in sick mm -hmm. or lie about something That's if you true. take an order you have to deliver yeah. there's maybe 200 300 people at a banquet hall and the cake and exactly. obviously makeup exactly. is gonna be the main be like, centerpiece. Hey bride, I'm, I'm feeling sick today. Yeah that in. doesn't happen yeah. there are, there are days when I've been really sick really tired mm -hmm. So there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into making cakes or preparing for someone's special day, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. So there's also misconceptions that anyone can bake a cake or anyone can apply makeup. What would you say to those who've misunderstood the creative process and work that goes into what you guys do on a daily basis? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say not anyone can't bake a cake anyone probably can bake a cake however it's it's what that final product looks like do you have that patience in the kitchen are you able to you know nitpick everything and uh, be a stickler for details you can't just bake something cover it in fondant and call it a day mm -hmm. so I completely agree. I think, uh, of course, anyone can wear make. Anyone can put makeup on. Like I can put ma makeup on. My friends can put makeup on. But it's different when different between putting on makeup and being a makeup artist. I think the art that goes into makeup is it's a science when you really think about mm -hmm. it. And it's it's just. I think being a painter, I've always had the knowledge of color theories. It, a lot of people come in, they're like, you know, I have dark under eye circles. You have to know that you know this color counterbalances it and it'll even it out. Or 
you know, you can put on red lipstick, but knowing which red lipstick goes with which skin tone, and that's what I think you get from experience and from an expert that you just can't with someone who just applies. Yeah, I think color has a lot to do with cakes too, mm -hmm. because sometimes mm -hmm. I have clients who come out and tell me they want this color with this color, and I really have to sometimes tell them because at the end, the result might not look like what they pictured in their head because yeah. specific colors just don't go well together mm -hmm. on the palette. So it's, they pay you to be honest, too, about what you're going to deliver to them because you want to make them feel happy with the finished product and not come back to you and say you didn't advise exactly. them on something. Exactly. So exactly. is lowballing also common in the industry? Definitely. <laughs> um, I think... Uh, Occasionally, you get the, cl the occasional client, they're like, oh, you know, you're just putting lipstick and blush on my face. Why does it cost so much? I'm like, I, time, you spend hours of time, not even on the day of your wedding day, but like the day before, pleading saris, ironing saris, mm. cleaning my, I mean, after the event, all my kit is sanitized. I don't just take the same brush and put it on 10 different faces and reuse and reuse it and put it back. It's obviously all sanitized, all my lipstick. And that is, your entire kit getting sanitized is a good two hour process. I'm cleaning dishes exactly. and brushes and beakers. So there's a lot of hard lot work of that work. goes behind the scenes yeah, before <laughs> rather than hour. just a day of. Yeah. And just being, um, and even personality, I guess, the personality that you bring to a wedding, it's, it's not the same as you having your aunt doing your makeup to have someone there who knows who can, like, you know, if your necklace breaks, to be able to put it back together and just like little, little experience mm -hmm. that you'll have with someone who's experienced in the field. And you're paying for that. And I, in our community, I don't think there's a huge appreciation for that. Yeah, and I've had so many last minute changes as well. Somebody yeah. would call me and be like, oh, the banquet hall didn't have pink. We're switching the color to green. Can you change the <laughs> entire layout? And most of the times you sort of, just to make the client happy. You want to make them yeah. happy, right? Yeah, for sure. I do go out of my way. So. Yeah. <laughs> you put a personal, you put a personal interest into each piece that you put out or each yeah. face that you create. It's Definitely. something that you're putting your whole heart into, right? It's not something you're doing just to get paid for. Yeah. It's your passion. Exactly. So speaking of passion, you did mention that you need to be passionate in order to do what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Do you need to be passionate in order to succeed? I definitely think you need to be passionate in order to succeed. If, if you don't have a passion, I don't think you will be able to just go out there and just be positive. I think recently, um, my best friend's wedding, I was part of the bridal party and we stayed up, I think I was at a reception till 2 a.m. and I had a bride I had to be at her house at 3 a.m. I actually did not sleep and I went to the bride and I wasn't, obviously I wasn't sleep deprived. I can't be there and just be mean mm -hmm. and be like, oh, I'm just gonna put red lipstick on you because I wanna do it and it's the only thing in my kit that I wanna, no, of course. It, at that moment it's just the personality you bring you have to make your bride feel comfortable and if you're not passionate I can't do that I'm just gonna be like oh this is just another person it's just another day I'm just gonna put on whatever I want and it's just studying a face and not every face is the same you can't just kind of cookie cutter a look on every single person you meet so each client is special yeah and it, and it, I can't tr I don't think there's this thing as just turning off your brain and working and just applying yeah. all this product and I think it's the yeah. same for you exactly yeah. I think you really do have to be passionate in this mm -hmm. field to succeed because it's not a desk job where I can show up sleep deprived and yeah. finish my eight hours and go home. Mm -hmm. I would have to pour my heart and soul into each piece in order to have that desired effect at the end because yeah. if I'm tired or if I don't want to do it, it's going to show on the final yeah, product. Definitely. So what advice would you give to someone who's looking to jumpstart their career into makeup artistry? This is what they feel that is their calling. What advice would you give them? I think... Um, I think my first advice would be just um, value yourself, value yourself and value your art. It's so easy to have someone say, oh, you know, your work is not that great. Okay, find out what it is about your work that's not that great and work on improving and be like, okay, I'm just going to stop. I'm not going to do this. This is not me. I think, again, just find your passion, find your calling and just go for it and just keep doing it. I think if you don't do it, you're not going to you're not going to succeed. And I think another important advice is don't compare yourself. I think that's the worst thing you can do as an artist because art is different. You can be a makeup artist. I can be a makeup artist. Picasso created amazing art and so did Da Vinci, but they're both in art, like amazing different artists. Art. And um, it's just being able to respect that your art is different from someone else and having that. I think, especially with social media, it's such a small world. Everyone's looking at each other and they're like, oh, mm -hmm. they're doing that and they're doing that and I want to do this. Just as an artist, it should come from the inside and you should do what you think is right and not what everyone else is doing. And what makes you happy exactly. as an artist. Being true to you, I think, is what I would tell them. Tell the future, anyone who wants to And should it. they be prepared to 
hear a negative feedback Definitely. or be put down or Definitely. even fail a couple of times Definitely. before they succeed. Yes, yes. And how about you? I would say the exact same mm -hmm. thing, never give up, because there have been nights where I've been moved to tears because something is not working out and I have this cake due in the morning. Mm -hmm. Something as simple as, I mean, I had an issue on Canada Day when I had to make a buttercream cake, and that's probably one of the most simpler cakes in mm -hmm. fondant, except it was extremely hot outside. I woke up and the entire thing was falling apart. Oh, wow. So I had to redo the whole thing and cancel on plans with friends, but that's what happens at the end of the day. So definitely never give up and practice makes perfect. And be prepared for whatever be happens. Be prepared, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And just keep practicing, that's what I would say, because all my cakes in the beginning was so hard to cover them completely and I made many mistakes, but just keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep mm -hmm. going, that's some good advice. Be passionate, keep going and yeah. work hard. Mm -hmm. So before we go, could you tell us where we could find more about your artwork, which is your artistry, and where they can see your work, get in contact with you. You can find more of my work on my website, which is www.beautybynilla.com, or you can follow me on social media, which is immediately updated more so than my website, which is on <laughs> Instagram or Facebook. You can find me there. And Shivy, where I'm, can we find your work? <laughs> I'm currently working on a website, so on Instagram at cakes underscore by underscore Shivy, S-H-I-V-Y. Perfect. And just before we wrap it up, would you like to share maybe a funny story about an early morning or something that went wrong? You shared the really humid day where yeah. your cake almost fell apart. Nilla? Funny story. Or something that went wrong and then it worked out just to motivate our audience in case oh, they need so some uplifting. Often. <laughs> that happens so often, like I can't even... Um, um, well, that's good to know. Someone yeah. accomplished has stuff that happens to them often, so yeah. it's not always <laughs> easy as cake, right? Yeah. No. No. Nope. <laughs> um, honestly, I can't think of something right now. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah. And Shivi, so has there ever been a time where you couldn't deliver? You had to tell a client, I'm sorry, I can't do this, or it's just not working out? I've probably, I have never ever taken an order and canceled, and I probably will never do that. But. Um, if somebody messages me for a cake and I really can't take it, I've learned to say no. Or if something else doesn't meet, like their budget or they're too far out for deliveries or something like that, I, I've learned to say no, which I didn't earlier on. Mm -hmm. So a lot of both of your work is a lot of scheduling. Yeah. Um, a lot of people have to schedule in advance. Mm -hmm. Do you feel bad having to say no to a few people on their special days, weddings, birthdays, just because you are booked or you have something else going on? Um, I guess it's part of the job. You can't feel bad. Obviously, um, as being an artist, when I book myself, I try to book myself with clients I connect with. So I say no to clients all the time if I feel that they're not my clients. Uh, it's I think as an artist, it's not worth putting your energy into something if mm -hmm. someone doesn't is not your style of doesn't doesn't have your style there's no point in you trying to achieve something so having to know when to say no so when to say no is very important so I think yeah you have to say no and that's something that in the beginning was very hard but I think it's something I learned over the years that you have to say no <laughs> for you as well because you've been in your business for a little over a year now yeah I, I don't directly deal with clients as much as you probably mm -hmm. would but at the same time there are certain people who would call me or message me and just the way they might approach the situation might steer me away from them. Yeah. So I have definitely learned to say no. It was a bit hard in the beginning, yeah. but it's it's not worth it sometimes, especially taking so many orders at the same time. I'd rather focus on one. And, and especially when you're trying to balance um, business as well as art. I think mm -hmm. it's, it's a complete f different... When I was just doing makeup, just as an art, and I wasn't doing it full time, and I'm still in school, and I'm just doing it, and then when you're doing it as a business, it's it's actually a whole different ball game because mm -hmm. you get burnt out so easily if you're just taking on yeah. bookings just for money. You, mm -hmm, you're yeah. not working just for money at the same time, but at the same time, of course, you have to get paid to exactly. value yourself. Well, thank you ladies so much for joining mm -hmm. us today and sharing your stories and insights. We will take a break now. You're watching Crossroads on TVI with Mother Shasendo.
Welcome back to Crossroads on TVI. Joining us now is Delani Bala. Delani Bala has a Bachelor of Science from the University of Toronto in Mental Health Psychology and Linguistics. She's also a fine art and wedding photographer. Her artwork is inspired mostly through self-reflection, the strength of women, and human intimacy. Photography is Delani's outlet and a tool for capturing ideas, thoughts, and dreams. Welcome to the show, Delani. Thank you. It's good to be here. So you're a graduate from the University of Toronto who, for four years, have studied for a degree that is fairly unrelated to what you're doing today. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little about your transition from men, uh, mental health psychology to photographer you are today? So that transition going from mental health psychology and linguistics and doing that for four years and completing a degree to then becoming a fine art photographer was probably the biggest transition in my life and probably one of the most difficult transformations I had to go through too because I had to ask myself a lot of questions like who am I, what am I doing, what makes me truly happy. Um, so yeah, it was a difficult process but something that is truly worth it now. And what sparked this uh, transition? Have you always been interested in photography or was this something that occurred post-graduation? Um, I think I always liked the arts. I played the violin as a child and music and drawing and painting and taking pictures. I love doing all of that stuff. But I think it was a year and a half ago when I just went to a, a store, bought a bunch of uh, drawing supplies, came home and drew a portrait and showed my uh, friend and she said, you know, you could be an artist. And as soon as she said that, as soon as those words had escaped somebody's mouth, it became a reality. And then I just kept doing more and more of it, drawing, taking pictures. Um, so it wasn't yeah. something that you realized you had inside of you until you almost accidentally fell into it and then got recognized by someone who gave you a little kick into the field? Yeah, I guess I always had it, but I didn't even know I had it because I was so focused on um, doing the more academic stuff and being a science student and somehow I pulled through and I was like a straight-A student f during high school and elementary school. Um, it's interesting yeah. how sometimes it takes another person to see that in yourself, right? That yeah. It's not something you can see in your own self until someone points it out to you. Yeah, and it makes it hard to see it in yourself when people are telling you you're not that, you're this. And like I was one of those Tamil girls growing up and my mom told me you, you are going to become a doctor right like you're going to make us proud right and like I wanted to do that I wanted to be the overachieving someone who made student. your parents proud exactly uh, so is that what made you go to school for a bachelor's of science was it the parental influence push um, or was it something that you were also passionate about but proved to be not as fulfilling as photography um, so I went to school to do um, science well it was human biology and I did that for my parents or well because of my parents I thought I liked it at the time um, then I discovered psychology and studying the human mind and that was really interesting to me um, and linguistics also I really liked that too and I I loved what I learned but when it came to putting it into practice and having to do something every single day it wasn't enough I needed to create an, a visual image so you found yourself to be more of a creative person as opposed to more influenced by sciences. You wanted to be more hands-on. Is that what you would say? Yeah. Like, um, I always had like vivid dreams and I could draw and all that stuff. So I wanted to just keep doing that. Okay. And you spoke earlier to me about how photography was your art. You mentioned the word art mm -hmm. a lot instead of just calling it simply photography. Mm -hmm. Do you think that photography is misunderstood as just taking photos as, suppo as opposed to the creative process it really is? Um, I think it's actually both. Both are true because photography as a practice is used for so many different things. It's a tool we use to take pictures um, for our health card or we take pictures of our brain to diagnose any any problems. So photography does exist for that, but for me, it, it is an art. I take, I draw out a sketch, and then I think, you know, what colors would work with this? What are the emotions I'm going for? What model would work for this? Uh, what sort of music do I want to play at the f photo shoot to um, 
you know, get the feeling and capture that feeling. And then once I take the picture, I edit it. And even when I'm editing, I'm listening to that type of music. So it really is like a creative process. So you have to be in that mood to create an image. And it's also a lot of planning before, during, and after. Exactly, yeah. Mostly before. That's where most of the work is. The creative process comes in. Mm -hmm. So photography is, as we know, a hugely competitive arena. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you stay relevant and stand out from the crowd? Um, the thing with it being competitive is I used to think it was really competitive. And so when I started a year ago and I started my Facebook page, and then someone else would start a Facebook page, it, it scared me. And I thought, oh my God, um, someone else is starting. So and you took it personal almost? Um, I was really f fearful because I thought success was finite, that there was like a hundred pieces of cake and if it was gone, it was gone. But I don't think that's actually true, not just in the art field, but any profession, success is infinite. And if you know what you want and you do it every single day the best you can, you're still gonna succeed. So I guess the competition doesn't scare As me. long as you find what you're truly passionate about and where your niche is. Exactly, I think that's key. And we've also seen a lot of successful photographers within the Tamil Canadian community. Mm -hmm. However, Tamil female photographers aren't as dominant in numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel that as a Tamil female competing in this industry, mm -hmm. you have to sometimes work a little harder to mm -hmm. be noticed? Or do you think that because you are a female, mm -hmm. um, it's maybe a little easier? Um, not just a little easier, I think it makes it a lot easier because um, there are other girls looking for female photographers. And when I work with a model or a bride, they say, oh, I feel so comfortable with you. I don't think I could do this with a male photographer. And I guess a lot of it has to do with being a girl myself and um, growing up with my sister, we're, we're always looking for the best light and the best angles to take selfies and all that stuff. So I guess we've, we know what another girl wants and what makes them comfortable. Yeah. So as another female, you know what someone expects or how to make another female feel comfortable as opposed to maybe a male photographer. Yeah, I don't think my gender really holds me back. If anything, it's probably my height because I'm a little bit shorter. So I have to take a stool with me to tower over people. Fair enough. And do you sometimes feel that certain male photographers or the industry in general doesn't take you seriously because you are female? Do you feel that because you're also a little newer to the industry and you're female, they maybe look at you like a little sister or someone who's just playing around with the camera? Um, I don't, I haven't really gotten that feedback. I find people um, are really encouraging and they, Supportive. Pe most people do want you to succeed. And I think the way people treat you also has to do with how you put yourself out there. And so if you feel uncertain and unsure, then people are going to treat you like you don't know what you're doing. And what do you think differentiates you um, from another photographer? Uh, I think it's just the fact that I'm a, a whole different person. When someone sits down and does makeup like Nila or the cakes uh, like Shivi, mm -hmm. um, no one else is going to do the same work as them. And that's the same as me. Everything in my life has led me to seeing the world in my specific way. So seeing it through your own eyes, exactly. your experiences, mm -hmm. to find your creativity almost. Yeah, exactly. Like all the movies I watch, all the music I listen to, the people I engage with, they're all shaping the way um, my art turns out. So is it fair to say that no one is really competition, but merely another artist that you can look at and actually enjoy their work and see how they see art through different eyes than yourself? Mm -hmm. I think um, the only real competition is, am I better than I was yesterday? Or is this person better than he was yesterday? But um, overall, we're just different. So how would you describe yourself? Well, there's two questions here. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your style of photography? Mm -hmm. And how, will, how would you describe yourself as an artist? So mm -hmm. your photography and then yourself as an artist. OK, um, I guess when I do photography, sometimes it's for clients and I have to do what they want. So if it's a birthday party, it has to be fun. I have to capture the little moments. At a wedding, I have to capture the mob shedding a tear because those are moments that they want to remember 10, 15 years down the road. Um, but as an artist, when I'm all by myself, I'm not always the most bubbly, happy person. I like to be in touch with darker emotions. In your zone. In my zone, I like to 
just chill out and do a lot of self-reflection. Yeah. Fair enough. So do you, you mentioned that when you're doing almost event style photography, mm -hmm. um, you're almost forced to take photos that you know other people want to see. Do you feel that kind of traps you as an artist a little bit? Um, I wouldn't really say I'm, I'm forced into doing it, but rather I'm observing it. And so where everyone else at the party is having a good time, like I kind of get to be a fly on the wall and I get to you know, use my gigantic lens and zoom into little things. I actually really like doing it. So it's fulfilling to see the end result when you hand over a completed album to a parent of their child's birthday. Yeah. How would you describe that feeling? Um, it feels really good to, to know that you made someone else happy. And it's not just in a moment and it's gone, but it's like something tangible, something they can hold on to and say, um, this person is responsible for the way this photo turned out. I mean, there are a lot of other factors, but I was one of the reasons. So it feels good to know that you're gonna be in their life for quite a while. Yeah, and then um, hopefully referrals through them. and yeah. So to grow your business as well. Yeah, definitely. So three positives and three negatives about photography in the industry. We won't say negatives, we'll say challenges. Okay. Um, positives, I guess, um, like about the whole event photography, Photograph um, when you take a picture of something, it's a fleeting moment and it's never going to come back, but you have it now and you can look at it over and over and over again. It's that part really, um, blows me away. It's a lasting memory. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I really love that about photography. I love that it's my outlet for expression. For some people it's writing, for some people it's singing or dancing, like a dancer just sometimes has to dance to, to get whatever emotion they have out. And for me it's, I'm gonna take a picture and I'm gonna create the image. Um, so the expression, um, also it's like a form of play for me. A lot of the time I'm at home taking pictures and um, my boyfriend or my sister has to step in and say, don't you have work to do? But like, the, f the good thing is like this is work and it's play. And you get to enjoy it at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's a great positive. Yeah. Um, the negative is, this is a positive and a negative. Uh, equipment is becoming more affordable. So people um, think they're a photographer. Or, well, they are a photographer, but they may not be able to do what a more skilled photographer is able mm -hmm. to do. To have the eye for photography is a little different than being able to snap a photo. Exactly. So um, it's hard to prove to other people that you can do something that's worth their money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're like, my, my dad could do this, but I'm not sure that he so can. So you're, you're left oftentimes trying to explain to other people why you charge what you charge or mm -hmm. why you do what you do, because a lot of time they misunderstand mm -hmm. what you do. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in the end, when people compare their, they go out and buy a DSLR, and then they compare their work to um, a professional, they can see that difference. And so, you know, even though it's more affordable, I, I think the quality. the quality is still obvious. Uh -huh. um, photography is also like a big investment in terms of money. You can't just say, I'm gonna do professional photography um, with no money. So I guess that's another downfall, but um, there's there are still ways around it. You can rent equipment. So the positives um, outshadow the challenges. We'll Definitely. say, yeah, for sure. So, is photography <coughs> something you're truly passionate about? Is it something you see yourself doing in the long run? Um, I am definitely f passionate about photography. I think I'm more passionate about um, art, and I photography is sort of a tool. The camera is just a tool. I. C I can see myself doing music videos or documentaries. For me, it's more what I'm capturing. So it's just one outlet out of possible hundreds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And we'll take a break now. You're watching Crossroads on TVI with Madhusha Santal.
Welcome back to Crossroads on TVI. We're joined by Delani Bala, who's discussing the photography industry with us today. Welcome back, Delani. Thank you. Okay, so earlier we talked about a few of the positives and the cons in the photography industry. Mm -hmm. But what we'd like to know right now is how difficult is it to make a stamp or a name for yourself in the industry? Um, the most difficult part about making a name for yourself is figuring out who you are and what that name is. So asking stuff like, when you're gonna go take a picture, asking yourself, what am I taking a picture of and who is this for? And if you're iffy about the answer to those questions, um, it's gonna take longer to get somewhere. So it's harder to get to an end product without knowing where you're going to begin with. So there's a lot of planning you have to do. Mm -hmm. And knowing what that product is and believing in that product. So passion is a part of the job. We keep mm -hmm. going back to the same topic, but mm -hmm. I feel like in this industry, in the creative industry, passion is a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. And without it, it's hard to make movement. Definitely, it's really what fuels you day after day because it can get exhausting. And can people tell if you're a photographer who lacks the passion? Will it show in your art? Do you think there's, there's a difference between someone who puts their whole heart and soul into a piece of work mm -hmm. as opposed to someone who just takes a couple of photos and calls it a day. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's really easy to see it when someone is working. To see um, when, when I take a good picture, like I smile. And I don't even know I'm smiling, but my clients know I just took a you really good picture. You feel good about picture. it. Yeah, and, it, and that's what keeps me going. But um, when you see someone who has like beautiful makeup on their face or a really be beautifully decorated cake or a stunning image that came from passion like someone put their heart and soul into that do you find yourself sometimes walking down the street or going to the grocery store and mm -hmm. then seeing something or someone and saying hey I could probably turn that into something like your mind lights up yeah it's funny I was actually at a funeral this morning and oh um, well <laughs> it's a little sad but okay yeah it was actually really it was a really sad funeral but um, I was sitting there and I was just thinking like we're all just kind of hanging out before we die and this image just popped in my head that like I was just hanging out in a coffin and I'm like okay I need to go home I need to sketch this out and I did actually come home and um, my boyfriend and I both um, sketched out a coffin from a bird's eye view and you're just hanging out there with your iPod and c because I we're just spending time mm -hmm. till the moment we So die. you find inspiration in all things life, yeah. happiness, sadness, mm -hmm. sorrow. Yeah, just life as it is. So yeah. life itself is an inspiration, you'd say. Yeah. So what advice would you give to another young person looking to start up a photography business or even get themselves through the door? Mm -hmm. um, my biggest advice is just to start. Um, Sometimes perfect is, is not what sh we should be striving for. And the truth is that when you start out, your pictures are probably not gonna be that good. And I don't even think my pictures are as good as they're going to be, but you still get up and you still make, make the pictures. You as make best the best of all of it. Exactly, yeah. Do you sometimes find yourself editing photos that you thought you loved during the process and mm -hmm. then waking up and looking at them two weeks down the road and going, what was I, I, I don't like these, what was, yeah, what was I thinking? Yeah, um, it's funny because I can usually tell during the photo shoot if I'm gonna like the pictures or not, because I guess you just know, like it's just that, that passion that I, we were talking about earlier. What, if you really feel it, then you're really excited for the pictures and it doesn't, I don't really go back later and say, oh, these pictures are not that good. Unless like a lot of time has passed and I've got technically better, mm -hmm. that I'm like, oh, I should have lit this better. So you start critiquing your own work and pulling from there. Mm -hmm. But if I did my best at the photo shoot, then I'm pretty happy with it while I'm editing. So it's a learning process and all photographers go through it, mm -hmm. no matter what stage they're at. Yeah, any profession, yeah. Okay. So what advice would you give to an aspiring photographer who, like yourself and the two yes prior, mm -hmm. have pursued a degree or postgraduate in something that's not the creative industry mm -hmm. and they're looking to break it to their family that uh, maybe I want to be a photographer? Um, I think if you're not sure yet, definitely try it. 
you don't have to drop everything you're doing and then you know spend twenty thousand dollars investing in gear because not everybody has that privilege you still need to put a roof over your head and feed your family so but you still have to be realistic about certain things yeah but you can still do it on the weekends when you have time and when you do it do the best you can the other thing I would say is surround yourself with other like-minded people. When I was in university, it was really hard for me to get into photography and believe in my passion because all my friends um, and the people I just connected with were in business. They weren't even in my field of studies um, and art wasn't really a priority to so them. So you weren't exposed to that at that time? Mm-hmm. But once I started messaging one person, um, who was Ramesh from Butterfly Squad. I mm -hmm. spent five hours shower shadowing with them. Then I met Colin and um, Ramanan from Pearl Media, who introduced me to Ahlia Kumaran, who introduced me to Vipusita from Ovian Photography. So you networked, you made the initiative to message these people yourself and put your foot through the door. It actually started with just one message. And, and then, it spiraled into something positive. Exactly, it was a great domino effect. And now most of the people in my life are creative people. And when you, even when you're not inspired, you see them and you see them doing work and it pushes you. So how did your family take this? Um, from, if I'm not mistaken, you're mm -hmm. currently pursuing your business full time, which is photography. Mm -hmm. You have a creative uh, business and then you also have Art of Love, which you'll maybe explain later. But mm -hmm. how did your family take the fact that you went to school for four years mm -hmm. and then you decided to drop that and pursue something totally different? Um, they were a little bit confused and um, they didn't tell me not to do it, but they thought it was a phase that I would just um, go back and do something more clinical. And my mom would like pick out blazers at the mall and say like, you should buy this when you get a nine, nine to four job, you can use it. So she hinted at it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, she did. And she's like, oh, you know, the, make this a weekend gig, but still do something else. Um, do you think that came from the fear of them thinking that, you know, what if you don't succeed? They were a little fearful. They wanted a nine to five because there's an assumption that a nine to five is a steady income. It, do you think that's what it was or was it just, we don't like creative industry, we don't like photography? It's a little bit of both. Um, superficially, it was, you know, you need the security um, and you'll be better off with something that gives you benefits and possibly a pension or that kind of stuff. But I think underlying all of that is this fear that a female can't go out and you know, take agency for her life and succeed as a photographer because I don't think they respect it, at least in my family. Mm -hmm. um, like my mom would tell me, don't go to our family's um, events and shoot pictures because I don't want them to see you doing that. So do you feel that you also have the opportunity to help break these gender stereotypes now Be as a female photographer and as someone who is pursuing a passion full time? Do you feel that you have the opportunity to say, no, it's not a negative business. It's not just men. Women can do it too and women can succeed. Yeah, I'm not sure if I've uh, if I can really help the older people, like my parents and our, relati uh, our older relatives, but um, I hope I can help the younger people. And that's all that matters, right? Like people who have a camera or a paintbrush and want to do it. Because the truth is, as much as our parents love us, and the truth is we love them too, they don't always know what's best for us. And you ventured out into your own business, which mm -hmm. is pretty risky. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you decide to start your own photography business when there is all this competition out there? What made you venture into that? I guess it just felt like the right thing to do. I was also going through a more internal process at the same time where I made it my goal to, to find myself, which is obviously going on and will continue to go on but um, that year I told myself I'm going to be authentic and I'm going to do the things that honor me and photography was one of them and even though it was really risky I just had to do it. You have to be true to yourself. Yeah. For sure. So would you say that it's paying off? You're happier? I'm definitely happier. I'm not sure if it's paying off literally just yet. It takes time but for it sure takes as time. with most businesses. Yeah and I do believe I'll be successful. 
for sure. And we hope you are too. Thank you. Um, so where can our audience members find out more about your work and what you do? Where can they contact you at? Okay, so if you want to want me and my partner to document a love story or any type of human love story, you can find us at artonlove.com or our Facebook page, Art on Love. Or um, for my fine art photography, Delani Bala Photography. So what's the difference between these two uh, businesses? Um, fine art is just my own reflection, things that reflect me. Um, as an artist. As an artist like we were talking about earlier mm -hmm. and um, art on love is about other people for sure yeah and would you encourage other Tamil females to pursue their passion for photography if that's what they really want to do if that's what you want to do do it start now so I encourage you. it's never too late no never too late and do you see it almost a sisterhood or is there a friendliness in this industry a lot of people assume that it's pretty cutthroat and you know everyone is trying to get the same gigs, but do you think it's, there's a sisterhood in there? For sure, for the people who want to believe that there's a sisterhood in there. Of course, there are going to be people who don't support you because they're afraid, but for the most part, people want to succeed and they want to see you succeed as well. Thank you so much for joining us today, Delani, and sharing your story with us. That concludes our show for today. We wish our guests continued success with their journeys. You've been watching Crossroads on TVI with Madhusha Sento.